Today we have Dr. Brian Lang on the show. We've got nutrition to cover, so stay tuned. But recently, um, I've been more and more interested in nutrition because it's a very simple way um, to really, really improve both the length of your dog's life and the quality of your dog's life. Um, so in the last year, I've been actually working on an app for the iPhone um, to actually called Best Dog on Diet to help dogs, our owners, manage their dog's weight and first determine if they're overweight and secondly determine how much to feed of whatever food they're feeding to safely lose weight. That's very exciting. So it's, it's based on stuff I've been doing for years in practice with formulas that I use and how we monitor our, our pets and, and over the years I thought you know this is something that we could probably automate to help a lot of people. So we've, I've spent months accumulating data on foods. We have over 1,300 different foods, all the kilocalories per cup, protein, fat that, that are in the foods. Um, so that when you go through the app, you ch put in your dog's weight, you put in, um, choose what food you're feeding. The app now knows already everything about it. And then it will then, you then have to choose whether your dog needs to go into the maintenance program or the weight loss program. And then the app will tell you how much to feed. And then it reminds you if you're on maintenance, you weigh once a month. If you're on um, weight loss, you weigh once a week. And then the app will make adjustments depending on how quickly or how slowly your, your pet's losing weight. Dog on diet, and this yeah. is your uh, app? Yeah, and it's this is, yeah, this is um, fun. It shows you and, and it really emphasizes how the danger of feeding um, too many treats. So in this, you've got, that's for a 10 pound dog, if you feed two medium-sized dog biscuits, which a lot of people wouldn't think twice about, um, it's equivalent to me going out and having a T-bone steak, a potato with sour cream and all the fixings. And a donut. And a donut. Oh, that's horrendous. As a snack. That's not my meal. That's a snack. And so you can see why we have other ones for labs and golden retrievers um, showing it, it as well. And, um, and that's just one example of yeah, just one example. So it shows cookies. the danger of, of treats, yeah. And they seem so small and yeah, they harmless, seem innocuous, really. And, and yet they're not. And I, I have uh, I have a client that likes to give her dog carrots as treats, and um, I never saw anything wrong with it. And then we found out how many carrots she was giving her dog, and her medium-sized dog I think is eating somewhere between 10 and 15 carrots a day. <laughs> and they're only those little baby carrots, but yeah, uh, carrots are high in sugar, but they're, but they're good yeah. for you, but they're they high in calories. sugar as well. Yeah. And I know that even for, for humans, um, when you go on a diet, and if you're working with a dietitian, they tell you that yeah. carrots is in a, I think carrots is in a completely different group of vegetables where they're a little higher in sugar, yeah. a little higher in calories, so you have to limit yourself. Yeah. The That's next uh, slide that we're showing right now is, um, again, your app is bestdogondiet.com. Yeah. And uh, this is a, for a medium-sized dog, which is about a, a beagle-sized dog. Yeah. And that's just showing one of the typical types of little bones that are stuffed with, with filling that you can get that you wouldn't think much about. Yeah, it looks that like a busy bone or a stu like a stuffed right. uh, bone busy, you buy at the superstore. Yeah, busy bone, that's what it is. That's a busy bone. Um, the, um, that's equivalent to me going on and having a hamburger and a medium fries. Um, when that's you get a lot of calories. Yeah, that's a lot of calories. You might want to break that And again, that this in is half. a snack. Yeah. <laughs> and this is, this is a lab, so bigger size dog. This so is Marie's dog. Yeah, this is like Marie's dog. So you give one of those type gem bones, and we're just talking calories, not nutrition, but it's equivalent to me going out and having a chili cheese dog, a large pop, and a banana split. So you can see why some of these things um, really, really add up. Right, and we do have a lot of, uh, a lot of people out there that, I mean, I, I'm probably guilty of the same thing, that my dogs don't have a weight problem, but I always think no big deal yeah. if they have a cookie. You don't stuff you don't think about. You don't think about it, and it's it doesn't seem like a big deal at all. More, and, so. and the other thing that happens is you have, you know, wife comes home, and the dog looks like he hasn't been fed, so she goes, get, grabs a cookie and gives it to him. Later, the husband comes home, same thing. Kids come home or go by through the kitchen, the dog's sitting there looking at the cupboard where the cookies are and gets another cookie. Right. So what you'll find is a lot of times when we're interviewing people, no one person in family knows how many cookies the dog got in a day because e to each one he looks like he's never had anything. And, and what yet, would you say is the safest way then to control that? Because everyone knows see, when you have small children at home, um, it's not the little peas and carrots that fall off the, the no. tray when, you're, when your baby is in a, a, a 
you know, a little seat and you're feeding them at the at the table. It's not the little bits of Cheerios mm -hmm. or alphagettis that fall on the floor that's really making the dog overweight. It's probably the older children and the husband and the oh, wife sure. and the babysitter yeah. that sees this cute, yeah, this these cute brown, brown eyes. eyes. Yeah. And then they say, uh, oh, he must want a cookie. Yeah. And everyone knows that you know, uh, the way to a, a dog's heart sometimes is through their stomach. Sure, through their stomach. Um, same as yeah. some men. So you just <laughs> give them the, you just give them the treat, and you say, "Here you go," and they love yeah. it. And so they must be hungry. I think most dogs are hungry all the time. All, yeah. How do you avoid that if you want to keep everyone in the loop? Every, you know, you're not going to be able to stop every yeah. single family owner, like <laughs> family member, from giving a treat. Right. So what can you suggest as a deterrent if you know everyone's going to do it anyway? Then that's where if you have like a jar that you keep the treats in, then every morning you have one person in charge of this and they put in that jar what the dog's allowed to have. So whether it's, if you have an overweight problem, it should just be kibbles. Um, if, if you don't, but you want to stop from getting an overweight problem, then you put however many treats. And, and the good thing is if you're going to use some of those, break them up. But the best thing is healthy treats. Like these are great freeze-dried chicken things, freeze-dried salmon, any of those things that are high protein, low calorie are great things. And, but kibble's great, like, because you just take a portion of the daily thing and put it in there. And then that way, a child, yeah, I mean, a child can treat the dog 10 different times with kibble and it doesn't add up to much. And everyone's balanced so that you're not giving a whole bunch of ent empty carbohydrate. Dog's like. name? Um, Orion. Orion. So we took him and had, he's now a movie star. He's oh, I love that. that. So he's famous now. Yeah. Now famous. But that's not the, the <laughs> Molly one. But okay. the, um, if we have the, the, the graph, I, um, th we can touch on one other thing. One of the reasons that so many... There's your graph. Yeah. This is, this is interesting. Um, the blue line at the bottom is actually the formula we use for what's called light maintenance. Now, most dogs, that's what they need, most house pets, um, because they're not, you know, they're not sled dogs, they're not, not working hard, they're not herding sheep or anything. They're mainly at home, and when you're gone to work, they're not doing much. So light maintenance is typically what they need. What I did is I went in and looked at a bunch of different dog foods and looked at the bag on how much they recommend to feed, looked at how many kilocalories per cup, and then graphed that. So on the left, that's kilocalories, and on the, the bottom, on the x-axis, that's um, kilograms. And you can see that almost e there's only one food that comes close to that, and even at the higher level is a little lower calories than, than our light maintenance. Every other one's quite a bit more. The red line is a senior dog food. Now, senior dogs need about 20% less calories than, than young dogs, and yet it's still above our light maintenance. What's really interesting is the um, dog food B1 and dog food B2 um, on there, which is the green and the, and the light blue, um, are from the same company, just different brands. And so they're not even using the same formula for, for either of their dog foods. So what happens is if you naively go, okay, I'm going to feed what's on the bag, chances are you're overfeeding your dog. So that's yes. another reason. Thank you very much for coming oh, on the show. Welcome. Thank you Enjoy. to everybody who called in and who watched. Um, our topic was nutrition today, and we really appreciate you watching. Thank you so much, and we will see you next week.